Hello, everybody. We got a fun one for you today. So I received a text message from one of my best dentists that I work with saying, I need you to help save me on this tooth. He was prepping it, got it, carries into the pulp tissue, as you can see there. Um, and he told me to, quote, make it look pretty like you did the last time. <laughs> so this is going to be a really straightforward root canal with kind of a complicated uh, buildup scenario here. Um, as you can see, it's not really that difficult of a case from a root canal standpoint, but to get this tooth looking nice and beautiful, you'll kind see what we do here so pop that temporary crown off the dentist told me don't worry about having to do a new temporary on there I don't have stuff to do temporaries and I don't plan on doing that <laughs> um, ended up using the Glickman clamp for this one as well just because there wasn't a ton of tooth structure to grab onto so starting out here just going back in to do the access as you can see we're right on top of where that uh, canals are so not very hard as far as getting into this area um, just use that workhorse burr and expose the buckle there I need to go back and pick up the paddle just a little bit um, once you find one I found that I find that it's easier if you are doing a multiple canal tooth to find one of them and once you get that you kind of know your depth gauge and everything else that you'll need to do so there we are you can see its tooth is still vital we were doing this more she really wasn't having any pain in here. He wanted to get a couple of posts to help support it and kind of build the tooth back up. So going in right away with that 2006, getting that coronal pulp tissue out. As usual, I have an estimated working length off of the comb beam. The nice part of this is because it was in a temper, I could see exactly where the actual tooth structure and even on the comb beam you can differentiate between the crown the temporary crown and the actual tooth itself so at this point uh got those both cleaned out and we are at working length so about a minute and a half in not too bad <laughs> as far as finding the working length this one was a little bit funky uh getting the actual length here there was some bleeding and so um you'll see me kind of rinse that out here because it was throwing off my apex locator this is this was done in the room with an apex locator that i think is trying to go bad it's been dropped a couple times <laughs> and so it goes on the fritz every now and then so probably need to replace that uh but just working at it past a little watch winding as we go down i'm um, getting an accurate measurement here um, love those rolled handles on the back of the mirror those are from eie um, really a nice time saver just to have them available for you there i do sometimes find too that curve right there i can thank dr west for that <laughs> apices back in 2012 showed me that you uh need to put that little bend to get around the corner there so if you're having trouble getting down a canal even if it's pretty straight put just a gentle bend and oftentimes you're going to find that you can go painting right after that so um getting this length again as we go back in there we go and went sideways so let's go ahead and try to do that again <laughs> like i said this is the only part that took a little bit extra is getting the length here the uh, two, two canals i do believe they join at the apex is kind of what it felt like and what it looked like and so oftentimes with these type 2 canal systems you'll find that the smaller files will back themselves up a little bit it was slightly calcified nothing out of the ordinary uh, you'll see i'll have to go down a couple times um with rotaries where it's usually it's a one and done situation but at this point we now have our length and you can see how that file was bent there as well so we're going to go in here starting off with the 1704 uh, we'll be working through 1704 and 2006 i do like to use a combination of tapers and so i find that if you have an 04 and an 06 it works better than just having straight 04s um, i think that different tip size different taper is the best way to uh, avoid binding of the files if you just had a 17 and a 2004a there's really the, point three one hundredths of a millimeter difference between the two of those so it doesn't really do that much different but having that 2006 uh, gets you a little bit more flare up top which makes it so that the 17 can work a little farther down so wasn't able to get all the way down here working length is 19.5 so I can just use the existing stoppers on there because they are 1.5 millimeters I do miss one millimeter stoppers I don't know why they decided to change it I assume it was because some reason but yeah I remember all the stoppers used to be a millimeter and now they're 1.5 on the rotaries so a little bit harder if you have a 20.5 millimeter <laughs> tooth so going back in again here I did a couple cuts just because this is a lot of you know going back and forth and back and forth and you can see we're almost dropping in and I think it's right where those two canals joined together where I was having a little bit of difficulty truly getting patent um, but you can usually feel that stick give way when you finally get patent <clears throat> and looking much better here so going on with our final rinse i still like that triton stuff from brassler it just seems to do a good job bubbling up and getting all that nastiness out of there so this will be the final rinse portion and what i'm looking for here i'm going to use up the whole syringe but what i'm really looking for is how much debris we have coming out if i'm still seeing any bleeding or if there's still drainage here we'll go through and run a couple more syringes um, for a case like this that was vital really not too hard to get this cleaned out in a you know efficient manner here i still like using that activator just to knock any bits 
it's loose, going back in, I save usually about a half a cc of solution just to rinse that out with. You can also use EDTA, you can use um, isopropyl alcohol. There's lots of options as far as what you need to do to clean this out. Using a little micro suction here to get that tooth nice and dry. I absolutely love that guy. And then going back in here with the Air Only Strop Co. Once again, low PSI. You don't want to blow it out the end of the root or anything like that. Um, and you'll see this assistants actually have different size tips on there. I like using the etch tips on mine because it's more fine work. Um, I've switched over. The assistants used to have that tip and we switched over to a larger gauge tip on there, which has made a huge difference because they can be farther away and still have the power. So you'll see I don't really have the assistants blow air into the actual chamber with theirs just because it's a lot more powerful. <laughs> so that's one thing to consider there. We No one wants to have embolisms. So going back in with our AH+, you can see it looks nice and clean inside there. Um, it's going to do the squirt technique for this one as well. Once again, you want to go back in with a 20k file, just recapitulate to length, especially in a case like this where it's been type 2 and I've been having trouble getting patent because they kind of bounce back and forth. It's really important to go back in, recapitulate, make sure you're patent, make sure everything is clean and open all the way to the very bottom. So going in here with a beta to do the actual squirt technique here. Now, I'm going to be doing post in both of these canals because I have access to do it and they, they don't uh, converge. That's the only time I don't like doing two posts is if they converge too much. And so when I'm doing this, I'm trying not to fill all the way to the top. Unfortunately, I did. <laughs> uh, the reason I don't want to fill all the way to the top is because then I have to go back in and clean it out because I need to create space for the post here. If we were not doing the buildup, this would be the easiest case ever. I'd be I'd clean it up after this and throw some cavity in it and call it done. So haven't really cut out that much of the treatment. We'd be done in, you know, seven minutes with a root canal, which is pretty awesome. So the time that it takes to do the buildup is really what I wanted to, this is why I recorded this one, is it seems like it's straightforward, but really we spend a lot more time doing the restorative than I even do for the root canal at this point. So we're going to go in here with the alpha to start to create that post space, and as usual, I'm going to have problems with stuff getting in between the isthmus. <laughs> so I'll go in here in just a little bit, use some head drums to clean that out. Um, just to try to make sure there's no gutta percha up top. I did fast forward through some of this, so you'll see it here in a second. Cool trick, you can use the alpha to uh, actually melt the rubber dam. So I knew I was going to be doing the build up here. What I was, I don't really like leaving prepped surfaces when I have a case like this where it's kind of broken down. So what I'm planning on doing is creating just a flush parallel surface all the way up and letting the dentist choose how deep of margins they'd like to do for the crown prep. Because of that, we're going to be pretty much going around the entire outside surface of the tooth. And if I had left the uh, rubber dam in that area, it would have just got caught on the spinning rotary. So we don't want to do that. So once again, speeding up, just kind of clean all this junk out. Um, want to make sure that we get all that nastiness out of there and so that you have a nice space for the composite to get inside there and heal everything and seal everything up. Rinsing this out here and then we're going to be um, using a couple different posts today. So normally I use the Brassler 5004s. I have found since I've switched to their VT Scout files, they don't remove as much tooth structure, which is why I switched to them. But because of that, on really small cases like this where the shape is pretty much just what the file is that 1704 doesn't remove enough tooth structure and the 50s don't fit so this one was so tight what i decided to do is use these new posts and so these are the accessory posts from ultradent they're 0.4 instead of 0.5 that you know tenth of a millimeter doesn't seem like that much but it actually makes a huge difference in what you're able to do so they're nice. They also look a little more radio opaque on the image, which is interesting. Those brasser ones are kind of off. You will see that my angle was off there. I wasn't sure if I was going to have to make a little notch. I used to just leave it at an angle, but I think it's better to actually have more straight line here because that's where you want the post to do its work. The reason we put posts in here is not to retain the cords to help prevent snap off failures. I know that's a contentious debate and I'm happy to get into it with anybody, but what I want is to make sure that the direction of the post is in line with the long axis of the tooth itself. And so just removing that tiny little notch, now you can see those posts are more parallel and they're where they should be. So that's what the x-ray looks like. That weird looking thing is actually a chunk of gutta percha in case you're wondering, that's not a weird lateral. So I did do a little bit more work off camera here that no one really needs to see, but um, I decided to use cord here. And yes, I am an endodontist who has cord, <laughs> not the most common of things. I don't have a cord packer, so I just kind of use my glick here. But the reason I place cord 
board here is because it's circumferential, I want to just push the gingiva out of the way rather than remove it. it. It is nice, healthy gum tissue at this point. You'll see there will be some bleeding at the end, and that's from both having the cord in there as well as I do a little bit of prep right along the margin there. But by keeping the gum tissue out of the way I think this works better than going in and trying to remove all of it she had really nice healthy gum tissue if it had been inflamed or if it had been some issues from caries I would be more likely to take everything out and change that inflammatory gum tissue to more of a traumatic tissue by doing the preparation with both the alpha and the um the rotary, the, the high speed. And what that does is just helps heal up the area a little bit faster. So this is stuff that I found from doing a lot of restorative over the years. Sometimes it's better just to remove the gum tissue and start over fresh. Sometimes it's better to try and keep it. So what you saw me doing there was just looking at any bleeding points because I want to get them all under control before we start doing the restorative process. And I just use the alpha. It works like a little cauterizing. You can just kind of tap any spot that's bleeding. So we're going to go through here, use the BioClear disclosing solution to see how much bacteria is present, what we need to clean off. And I've always found this to be fascinating. It, it, The tooth looked pretty clean, but look at how much pink there is. That's kind of signs of the biofilm still being present. And what I found is some of these deep cases, the caries penetrates a lot farther than you can actually tell. This all looked nice and hard. I mean, it's been prepped and even still there's signs of bacterial activity inside there. So what this does is just kind of blast that all off so we can get the best possible bond that we can. As I've said in the past, I also like it because it does make it look really pretty for pictures. <laughs> so going in here, and this tooth, I was surprised by how discolored it became with the actual stain on there just because I didn't think it was going to be this much bacteria. So kind of an interesting thing. I've been using this now for about a year and a half and I'm always astounded by teeth that look like they'd be really bad but have very little bacteria activity and vice versa here. So going in total edge technique, getting this all cleaned out. Um, do I necessarily have to do it here with a little enamel? No, but I find that total etch just seems to be a better solution rather than relying on the self-etch. I do use clear fill SE, so it is does have the self-etch in there, but after talking with a bunch of restorative gurus, pretty much this multiple bottle total etch with self-etch inside seems to be the best. Now, that will probably change. This is 2023, so if you're watching this in a few years and I'm completely wrong, uh, just make sure you don't quote me without dating me. <laughs> so going in here, going to get that pretty picture. I, I always love seeing the difference with uh, switching out to those mirrors. Those Zerk mirrors with photos are just they're so much better. So looking pretty good here. As you can see, the bleeding has all stopped. The cord's doing its job. And, of course, there's a little bit of gutter purchase still inside there. So I used a 15 headstrom file just to get that area out in between the isthmus. One trick you can do here is to actually put a right hand bend on there. I know it's sped up, but you can kind of see it um, going in there with now the 25 to try to loosen up that piece. So I was able to loosen up the isthmus using the 15 head strum, and now I'm going back in with the 25 just to remove the rest of it. Once again, I have actually cut out a large amount of this. If you guys have any tips for how to not get gutta perch in the isthmus, I'd love to hear it, but looking nice and clean there. Um, no bleeding points, which makes me really happy. So we're going to go in and start the bonding process here. Like I was saying, we use clear fill. Um, I'm actually switching up. I currently use the three bottle system. I'm going to switch up to the two bottle system after talking with a couple of endodontists. It seems to work just as well, saves you that step of having the extra bottle, and so should be a little bit better. So I'll report back. I just ordered that from you know, eBay, surprise there, and we will be getting that back here in just a little bit. So drying off the prime, coming in with the bond now, and we're going to be when I do the buildups on a tooth like this, where it's pretty broken down, I like to completely encapsulate the tooth. And the reason why is there is going to be some shrinkage of the composite. And if you can, this is kind of a David Clark thought, if you can completely envelop the tooth, it's going to shrink inward because if you have a full 360 degrees of composite around the outside that shrinkage force will be towards the middle because it's all equal so in a way you're kind of making a semi crown out of composite pretty much and he's done some work with his bioclear system when you actually injection mold it and do all the fun stuff that he does showing it's about as strong as a crown as far as the strength of that composite when it comes in so kind of a cool technique but in this one we knew we were going to have a traditional crown here i think even david clark would say this is probably a little bit tough to do with bioclear but i could be wrong he could try it um and this is what i'm doing here is slowly going around the outside and creating that ring of composite so that when it cures it kind of creates a nice solid um solid restoration going in now with my posts when a tooth is broken down like this i like to fill up the area where the posts are going to be 
and then place the post and come back with more composite after to fill in those voids. Because you'll see, A, I struggle a little bit with the palette here. We, we missed the hole the first time, and so that created a little bit of a void. Going back in, trying to find that. And I get it fixed here as far as where I want it to go. And sometimes you do struggle like this when you're doing post. It is kind of frustrating. Um, I do get it into where I thought it would be. And you'll see in a second here that those are really far off compared to where they were. The, the, that palatal post is way more palatal than it should be. And so I catch this, thankfully, and I'll fix it here in a little bit. But going back around, as we've talked about, just to create that full circumferential ring of composite so it holds the tooth nice and tight and go ahead and fill in the rest of the composite around those posts. So pretty straightforward as far as this just kind of building it back up. You still see that palatal is off to the you know, to the palatal. <laughs> um, one thing you got to love with these uh, blue tubes is it's so much harder to press. I mean, this is me pushing with pretty much all my might trying to get in here. And it's just because it's a very thick and viscous fluid pretty much that you're trying to push through a very tiny hole. So uh, Unfortunately, it is kind of um, there's other ways you could do this, but this seems to be the best. It's just know that it's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to now go in and fix that final post. But before we do that, kind of smooth out the outside. I found this is a nice technique using the Glick to almost create my interproximal surfaces. Um, Finally, I noticed that the palatal is off. Go in, kind of push it a little bit with my hands, already looking much better. And we're gonna go back here and just confirm that that now is fully seated. And you saw it drop down there almost a millimeter. So I'm happy we were able to catch that before it. <laughs> you definitely wanna catch this before it gets bad. So go ahead and do the like here there. You can see that little space that the Glick created. It's gonna create a nice space for my burrs to go in and actually do the prep work here. So start off here with the wheel burr, just to quick pop off those two post on top that's the wonderful thing about fiber is it's very easy to cut metal a little bit harder if you're doing metal post and now we're going to come in with our prep burr which is that thicker one what i'm doing here is just reshaping that whole area going down to where the cord is so you'll see me start those little blue fibers i don't want to actually grab it here but i like to leave everything nice and flush between where the crown and the tooth meet that just makes it so that when the gingiva does heal up it heals up nicely i found that if you do a crown prep right now and leave it the gingiva likes to grow over the actual prepped margin area and it's not healthy so when the dentist tries to go back and do the actual crown they run into a lot of bleeding issues and struggle kind of getting the impression. This is a <laughs> learn from my mistakes type thing. Uh, I used to do preps like that all the time and I started to get some complaints from dentists of, hey, the gums are so angry here. If you leave it flush, the gingiva just kind of goes to where it wants to go and it heals up and is healthy. I have seen cases back, I mean, I think the longest one was four years. They ended up not having anything done and the gingiva was perfectly healthy. The, there is no issues whatsoever with the buildup. So it can last a while. On a case like this, you obviously wouldn't want it to be like that just because you're gonna have a space and there's gonna be collapsing and every all those other issues. So we're gonna just start to do the buckle here and then um, I'm gonna actually take the cord out at this point because we're, we're getting to the point where I'm probably gonna start ripping it out by accident here. Um, I'm trying to do the buckle. I usually do more of a direct vision for my buckle preparation Operation as well but because the, the way that her lip came up it was pushing me out so I decided let's go ahead and pull the cord while we have the rubber dam on and then I'll remove the actual rubber dam and do the final prep here just get everything look nice and clean so there will be a little bit of bleeding here and that's just because it's been having the the cord has been shoved down into that area I didn't really cause a ton of tissue trauma where sometimes I do want to cause that tissue trauma so it heals up with uh, more traumatic healing rather than inflammatory. In this case, though, the gum tissue was nice and healthy, and so that's why you saw the weird thing of an endodontist placing cord. <laughs> I will say Jenny uh, told me she used to be perfect at cutting the perfect amount to get around the outside, and you'll notice she did not do that there. So I, anytime I get to razz her, she's fantastic at absolutely everything. So it's kind of fun when I get to razz her every now and then. So um, I, like I said, I like doing that buckle prep with just direct vision here because you can pull the cheek out of the way, and it's kind of tough without having something like an a lot of other retraction options, especially because where you saw how that gum tissue was pushing up into that area. And we're just going to do a final refinement here of that buckle um, margins, kind of the transition to go between there. I'm not trying to do a final crown preparation here. I'm going to let the dentist choose what style he'd like to do. But what this does is really just creates that nice smooth surface so they can pick and choose where they want the 
crown margin to be. So finishing this up here, you can see we created a little bit of a space there in the gum tissue, and that's going to heal up just beautifully. It shouldn't be a problem at all for them once they do the crown. I like to have the patient wait, you know, maybe a week. That's usually all it takes for the gingival turnover to where the point that you can work on it. It's not like a crown lengthening where it's going to take a long time for that to heal. When you ha cause trauma like this, the gingiva heals really quickly and quite nicely, actually. Um, so once again, this is something I've learned from doing this now for longer than you think. <laughs> but the, the goal here always, my goal has always been to take care of patients and make the general dentist lives as easy as possible. So we're going to final go in with the final barrel burr just to smooth off any sharp edges. And I like to use it to create the central groove I don't want this tooth to be hitting at all because it was already broken down. Uh, don't want her to cause any more trauma to the area. And it's going to be fine without having a temp on here for, you know, a few days. I think she was scheduled a week after. That gives the gingiva enough to, time to heal. And then you can do the temp, the crown on top of it and everything should be good to go. And that's pretty much all we need to do. So finalize that prep. Just create everything, make it look nice and pretty. Once again, I do love this burr. I wish I had this burr in dental school. <laughs> it would have been my... my Pros scores would have been a lot higher if I had this burr in dental school because <laughs> I tried to do this with a 856 and that just didn't work out. So you can see the uh, margins look really nice there. Uh, pretty much have draw. You could almost take an impression at this point, but uh, the dentist is a lot better dentist as far as the restorative aspect than I am. So we'll let him choose the margin that he wants to go. And that's kind of what it looks like. I know the, gun, the gums look a little bit raw there, but it's going to heal up nicely. There's the x-ray. Looks really pretty. And that composite is just you know, encapsulating the tooth. So hope you guys found this one to be interesting. As I was kind of saying, the a lot of times people the general some general dentists think that when endodontists try to do restorative, they're almost taking things from them. I think it showed you here, it took me about two times as long to do the actual restorative as it did the root canal. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, like and subscribe and I will talk to you next time.